What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to create a Martin style logo with your name on it or whatever name on it here in Adobe Illustrator. So as you can see I have Illustrator up and running. I have my color palette with the colors that I'm going to use in today's video and a little squiggly line vector because if you take a look at the Martin logo there's like a squiggly line close to the bottom of it. So that's what we're going to use this for. But with that being said, let's get to creating this from scratch. So the first thing that I got to do is create like a black rectangle because if you take a look at the Martin logo, you can see that it's basically a black rectangle with uh, two other rectangles combined with it. So what I'm going to do is go to my shape tool. I already have the rectangles tool selected. So what I'm going to do is go and create a rectangle like so. All right, and now I'm gonna create two more rectangles. One is gonna be on top of this one, and the other is gonna be on the bottom of it. So what I'm gonna do is hold the Option or Alt key, click and drag to make a copy of this black rectangle. Or if you wanna make a new one, just like how I did, then feel free. But that's just a little illustrative tip for you. But now I'm gonna take this newly made rectangle, and I'm just gonna make it narrow, like so. And then I'm going to place this on top of our first rectangle that we made, like so. And I'm going to take one of these transform points and I'm going to make this rectangle a little bit more narrow because the width of this big rectangle here, it's not going to be the same width of this newly made rectangle right here and the one that's going to be underneath it. So that's why I'm going to make this width a little bit smaller, make it a little narrow, kind of. All right, and you should end up with a rectangle that looks like this. So now we're gonna create another rectangle that's just like this one and put it on the bottom of this big rectangle here. So I'm gonna do what we did earlier. I'm gonna hold the Option or Alt key, click and drag to make a copy of this newly made rectangle and have it snap to the bottom like this, perfect. So now that we made the three rectangles, you have the option to combine them and make one specific shape out of these three rectangles. That's an option to you guys, but personally I'm not going to because we'll be adding shapes that overlap these two rectangles. And if you look at the Martin logo, there's text that goes inside of this middle rectangle here. So like I said, it's an option for you to combine these three shapes so that they become one, but I'm not going to in this video. But in case you do want to combine these shapes, here's how. So what I'm going to do is select all of these rectangles here. Then I'm going to go to my Shape Builder tool, which would look like this. And then with all three of those rectangles selected, I'm now going to hover over each of them. I'm going to click and drag, like I have this top one selected. And now I'm going to hover over this big rectangle here. And I'm going to hover over this last rectangle. And now after having all three of them selected, I'm now going to lift up off my trackpad. And now you can see that these three rectangles became one shape. So that's an option to you guys. Like I said, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to undo all that with the keyboard shortcut command Z. So now we can proceed to the next step of the video, which is applying this squiggly line to this uh, rectangle that's down here. So what I'm going to do is click and drag this onto that bottom rectangle here. Scale that a little bit. All right, resize it like so. And then on the Martin logo, this squiggly line kind of touches this angle right here. So I'm going to shift that up so that way it touches that angle. And let's check the other side. It doesn't really, but we can still fix that, okay? All right. And now from here, we can either adjust the squiggly line or adjust the rectangle that it's on. For me, I'm gonna adjust the rectangle. So I'm gonna click on that black shape and just shift it up like so. All right. And now with this squiggly line, I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna shift it down so the way it kind of overlaps this uh, rectangle shape like so all right and now you should end up with something that looks like this that squiggly line should overlap this rectangle like so now what we're going to do is select both the squiggly line and the rectangle so i'm going to click and drag make a rectangle selection 
that selects both the squiggly line and the rectangle. All right, and now I'm gonna go to my shape builder tool. And now I'm gonna select each and every part of this squiggly line, which in this case is in red. So now I'm just gonna click and hold to select every part of this squiggly line. Get these parts down here. That one. All right. And now let's go back to my selection tool. And now I'm gonna take this squiggly line away from this rectangle, so I'm gonna separate it now. All right, so click and drag to move that away. And now we have a similar squiggly shape on the Martin logo. Now if I go back over here to this one spot, you can see that there's kind of a discrepancy here. Well, it's not exactly a discrepancy, there's just an extra anchor point right here. So if I go to my white arrow tool, my direct selection tool, I can see that there's an anchor point right there. So what I can do is click on that anchor point and I can either use this tool to get rid of it or you can use the backspace or delete button. Either way, we just gotta get rid of that one anchor point. All right, and now with some of these handles, we can adjust the curve so that way it doesn't seem off. All right, and that's looking good to me. So let me zoom back out and we can see that we're making a good amount of progress here. And if you compare this with the Martin logo, you can see that in our document that these wavy lines, they kind of look too tall, right? And on the Martin logo, it's kind of flat, all right? So we can fix that by simply scaling it like we did earlier when we created these three rectangles. So we can select each and every one of these shapes here. And what I can do now is simply use this transform point and drag it up. So that way these wavy lines now look flat, right? So after doing that, you may have to shift it back down. All right, and now you can see that we have a flat wavy line, like so. And something you can also do is take these little bumps that are on the bottom of our rectangle. So while holding the shift key, I can select each and every shape like so. And then you can just simply move that down to kind of widen that wavy line. See? All right, and now let's go to add the triangles that are at the top of this uh, Martin logo. So let's go back over here to my rectangle tool right here. And if I click and hold on that, you can see that there's no option to create a triangle. So what we can use is our rectangle tool. I'm gonna hold the shift key so I can create a perfect square out of it. And you can see that the square is made up of two triangles, right? So I'm gonna lift up off my cursor. And what I can do is use my direct selection tool, this white arrow here. I'm gonna click on just one of these anchor points here. And I can hit the backspace or delete button to get rid of one of them. And now that square becomes a triangle. So now we can play around with that triangle and add a few of them to this top rectangle up here. But first, we gotta change that into a white. So I'm gonna go to my color options, which are right here. Click on that, select white. And then we can just simply place this triangle at the top. All right. And then in the Martin logo, the triangles that are on this top rectangle, they're kind of spaced out right so that's what we're gonna do is space them out like so and something you can also do to make this process go a little bit faster you can hold the shift key select both triangles and do what we did earlier by holding the option or alt key to instantly make copies of our shape or object all right and now i'm going to hold the shift key again select all these other triangles hold the option or alt key like so and then it looks like I have space for maybe one or two more triangles so I'm gonna hold the shift key select that one and two triangles option and alt key or option or alt key and there we go so now we have triangles at the top of our rectangles 
but you can see that this one triangle it kind of goes outside of this black rectangle here so what I can do is select each and every one of these triangles here not counting the rectangle so I'm gonna hold the shift key to deselect that and now I have the triangle selected so now I'm gonna hold the shift key again and I'm going to scale that until the triangle fits inside of that rectangle, like so. All right. And then if you take a look at the Martin logo again, you can see that the triangles that are up here, they kind of touch the top of that black rectangle. So I'm going to take this rectangle here and kind of shift it down, like so. All right. And you can now see that it looks a lot like the Martin logo. But because this rectangle is still its own object, what we can do is select this rectangle and select all these triangles again. And just select every part of this black rectangle and exclude the triangle shapes here. So that's actually what I'm going to do. But I think in the Martin logo that these triangles are actually white because I have a reference picture of the Martin logo right here and it's on top of a light gray background. So it's hard for me to see whether or not these triangles are either white or light gray. But if you do want these triangles to be transparent, what you can do is select both the rectangle and these triangles right here. And then go to your shape builder tool hover over the black rectangle so that entire area will light up in like a dotted pattern like mine is all you got to do is click anywhere inside of that region and the color might change but you can simply change that back to a black but the main thing is you can get rid of all these triangles now and illustrator kind of created a cutout of those triangles within the black rectangle so if i lift up off of this area that we selected you can see that there's now a cutout see and then I can change that back to a black, select these triangles, hit the backspace or delete button to get rid of them. So that's an option for you guys. You don't have to do it that way, but if you prefer the triangles to be white, you can leave it how it was. Or if you want them to be kind of transparent like how mine are right now, then you can do what I just did. But in my case, I'm gonna leave them white just in case. So to undo everything I just did, I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut command Z to undo everything I just did. All right, so now we have the triangles and this little wavy line down here. And now the most important part is to add the text. So what's good about the Martin logo is the text that is inside the Martin logo, it's sort of a basic computer font. The name of the typeface is called Gil Sans. I did my research, it's called Gil Sans. So that's actually on my computer. I didn't have to download it, it's kind of pre-installed. So what I'm gonna do is go to my text tool, which is right here. I'm gonna make a text box, like so. I'm gonna go up here to character, and then look for the Gil Sans typeface, which, because I used it recently, it'll be right here. And then if there are different variations to your font or typeface, there's gonna be a little arrow right here, like a little drop box, kind of. So I'm gonna click on that arrow, and now you can see all the different variations of your typeface. Like in this case for Gil Sans, there's Gil Sans Light, Gil Sans Light Italic, Gil Sans Regular, Gil Sans Italic, Gil Sans Semi Bold, Semi Bold Italic, Bold, Bold Italic, Ultra Bold, all that stuff. You can see all the different variations of your typeface if you use that little arrow right here and kind of give it a drop down menu. So I'm going to use this bold variation like so. And now comes the part that's really up to you. What text do you want to put into this logo here? I'm going to use my screen name, Cadillac. So I'm going to use all caps, actually, and type in C-A-D-I-L-L-A-C, -L -L Cadillac. And if you take a look at the Martin logo, you can see that the text is white, right? So I'm going to highlight all that text and go to my color options and select white, like so. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is move this to this rectangle. And then from here, I can change the size of the text by going back up here to my character window. And if you have a specific number you wanna put in this text size um, box here, feel free. But I'm gonna use these arrows so that way I can see what I'm doing as I change this number. 
I think that's a good size, so I'm gonna leave it at 146. But now after you're satisfied with the text that you wanna put in here, we gotta expand this text so that way it becomes a shape that we can manipulate. But of course there is a way to manipulate this text but still keep it editable. To do that, we can go to where our tools are and all the way at the bottom there's an option where there's three dots right here. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna scroll through until I see the touch type tool right here. So I'm gonna click on that. And with this touch type tool, you can resize a piece of text. You can rotate it. Or you can make it wide. That's up to you. But in my case, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to hit Command Z to undo everything I just did. So I'm not going to use the touch type tool. Instead, I'm going to turn each of these letters into a regular vector image and then manipulate it that way. So now that all the text that I want inside of this logo is here, I'm now going to go up here to Object and click on Expand. These settings are good, so I'm going to hit OK. And now each of these letters became their own separate vector image, but they're also in a group. All right. So now what I can do, just like any regular vector image in Illustrator, I can scale it, resize it, and do whatever I want with it. All right. So in my case, I'm going to scale it like so and then I'm gonna take this big rectangle that we still have I never combined it with anything so I'm gonna take that and scale it up like so and I'm gonna take this one rectangle and kind of attach it back to where it was all right and now I have what looks like a Martin logo but if you do take a look at the Martin logo you can see that the letter I and the letter a are kind of scaled up my theory is because they're vowels, that's why they look like that. And all the other letters are consonants. And in my case, in my logo, I have like three vowels, right? So now what I'm going to do is manipulate some of the letters that are within this group and change them so that way they look identical to the letter A and the letter I in the Martin logo. Because coincidentally, in my logo, I have two A's and an I, and so does the Martin logo. It has an A and an I in it. So I'm going to double click anywhere within these letters to get into the group. And now I can click on one of these letter A's, hold the shift key, select the other letter A, and kind of shift it up like this, like so. And then with the letter I, I'm going to do kind of sort of the opposite, right? So I'm going to get out of here, click on this letter I. And the transform points, they're similar to a regular rectangle shape in Illustrator, right? So now I can take this center transform point and kind of move that down like so. And now I'm going to get out of this group by double clicking anywhere outside of it. And now this is what our logo looks like. But if the letter A's, they kind of look too close to the letter C's here. So let's double click to go back inside of that group. I'm going to hold the shift key to select the other letter A. And I'm just going to move this rectangle slightly this way. Just to kind of make the width of those letter A's narrow. So that way they don't look too close to any of these other letters, you know? So now I'm going to shift this one over a bit. And shift this one over a bit. And there we go. So we're almost done here. All right. So now I'm going to take my rectangle tool again and I'm going to make a rectangle that's underneath this letter A here. All right? And I can reposition that if I want, but I'm going to leave it just underneath this letter A. And then I'm going to hold the option or alt key, click and drag to make a copy of that rectangle. And we're going to place it underneath this other letter A here. Like so. And then there's a dot for this letter I that we can create too. So let's go back to our rectangle tool here. I'm going to click and hold on that tool and grab the ellipse tool. All right. And then holding the shift key, we can create a perfect circle dot for this letter I here. And then on the Martin logo, I don't see this dot going anywhere above where these letters stop at. So, 
So I'm gonna go back into this group by double clicking. And then I'm just gonna scale this letter I down a bit, like so. All right. And now we have a good enough looking Martin logo, but there's only one thing left to do. We gotta add some color. So in advance, I have my color palette right here. And what we can do is add some color to like the insides of these letters and to some of these rectangles here because all the letters themselves, they're all white in the Martin logo, right? But there are some parts of this logo that need color. For example, the dot on this letter I, these two rectangles that we created, and the inside of this letter D here and maybe the inside of this letter A as well. So what we're gonna do is give some color to those specific parts. And I can use my color palette right here to give them specific colors, right? Because we already have black and white, that's taken. <laughs> and um, we can click on this rectangle right here. That's not within this group of letters. So we can just simply click on these rectangles. I'm gonna hold the shift key to select this other rectangle. All right. And what you can do is go to your color options. So if you sample the color that you want to apply to these rectangles here, and it's up here in your color window, feel free. But in my case, the colors that I want these rectangles to be, that would be over here in my color palette. So to select them, I can go to my eyedropper tool that's over here, click on those, and then with my rectangle selected, I can sample one of these colors up here. I'm gonna sample this blue color here. And you can now see that every part of this blue square here, it applies to the rectangle. So because I have this blue square in my document, it also has a stroke within this square. So as you can see, it has like a little black stroke here. And when I applied it to both of these rectangles, it not only sampled the blue color, it also added a stroke to it because this square here, it's also a regular shape in Illustrator. So if I use the eyedropper tool, it doesn't just use the color, it also uses the stroke as well, as you can see. But I don't know, you probably can't see it because it's on a black background, as you can see. If I zoom in, you can kind of see it, I guess. So you can choose to leave it how that is. I think I'm okay with that. So let's continue, all right? So let's now give color to this uh, dot for the letter I. I'm gonna go to my eyedropper tool, sample this yellow, and then you can see that because this yellow square has a black stroke to it, it applied to the dot on this letter I here. But you can simply get rid of that stroke by going up here to your color options, clicking on where the stroke is, and selecting none, right? And I could do the same thing with these blue rectangles as well, but I, I chose to leave those alone. But now let's give color to the insides of the letter A's and this letter D here, right? So I'm gonna go and grab my paintbrush tool right here. I'm gonna zoom in on this letter A here. And I'm gonna draw around that opening like so. And if I go back to my selection tool, you can see that because I used the paintbrush tool, it created a path for us. And if I go down here, you can see that there's like a little opening right here. So let me grab my direct selection tool, this white arrow here. And I'm gonna click on both of these anchor points so that way I can make it into an enclosed path. So I'm gonna click on that one, click on that one. And then to connect both of these anchor points together, I'm not gonna simply move them into each other. What we gotta do is join them. So I can use the keyboard shortcut Command J to join these two anchor points, thus making this overall shape that I created with my paintbrush tool into an enclosed shape. So Command J. And if I zoom back in here, you can see that these two anchor points, they snap together right so now going back to my selection tool i can now use this enclosed shape as a regular vector image in illustrator so if i go up here to my color options i can give that any color i want but in my case i want to fill it with one of these colors so i'm going to go to my eyedropper tool and then i'm going to select i'm going to select this red here and you can see that because this red square had a stroke, it also applied to this uh, shape that we created with my paintbrush tool. So we can easily get rid of that stroke by going up here to where it says stroke, or this little stroke option right here. 
and selecting none. And now we have just a red shape here. So now what I'm gonna do is take this one shape, I'm gonna right click and go to arrange, go to send back. And you can see that that red shape is gone, but that's because it's behind this rectangle here. So let's right click on this and go to arrange, send back. And now you can see that that red shape is now underneath the letter A, but also on top of this black rectangle. So what I'm gonna do is take that shape, hold the Option or Alt key, click and drag to apply it to this other letter A here. And there we go. And now let's apply a color fill to this letter D here. So let's go back to my paintbrush tool, all right. I'm just gonna simply draw around this opening for the letter D. All right, and go back to my selection tool. And then go back to my direct selection tool. Click on one anchor point, hold the shift key, select the other anchor point, right? And then use the keyboard shortcut command J to connect those two anchor points together. All right, and now it became a closed shape. So now let's go back to my eyedropper tool and I'm gonna sample this purple color here. All right, and in my case, I don't want that stroke there. So I'm gonna go to my stroke options and hit none. All right, and now I'm gonna click on this shape that we created, right click, go to arrange, send it back. It's underneath the D, but it's also underneath this uh, black rectangle. So let's take this black rectangle and move that all the way to the back. So right click on that, arrange, send it back. And there we go. That is a really good looking Martin logo. So yeah, that is how you do it. That is how you create a Martin style logo in Adobe Illustrator. So if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video.